What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to do a basic stitch and prepare your files for the first phase of post-production in 360. I've opened up AutoPano Video Pro and I've opened up another folder that has my six files in and I'm gonna drag them over and just plop them in. The first thing that you normally have to do is synchronize them and you can either use audio or motion to try and synchronize them. Luckily, these come from the GoPro Omni and they are perfectly synced, so we don't have to worry about that part. So we're gonna go straight to stitching. Now normally, if I was using my Omni, I would be using the Omni importer. But, because I wanna show you the basics of how to do this, I'm gonna do this manually. So my stitch is set for Hero 3 Plus and 4. I'm going to go ahead and let it, it's only a 1 minute and 20 second. I think I'm just going to do a current selection and use five positions. And I'm going to click stitch. And this is going to give me a range stitch. So this is not specific. This is taking five different places in the 1 minute and 20 seconds. And it's creating stills and it's going to stitch them together based on those parameters. And this shouldn't take too long. Okay, it's completed it, and it's already showing us our real-time preview now. As soon as the little spinning dial stops, it'll be all set in place. Okay, there it is. Now we don't need our individuals anymore, so I'm going to hit Control-1 and only bring up just our real-time preview. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get this evened out. So I'm going to take my mouse, I'm going to click and hold, and I'm going to drag this around until we get a nice flat surface. Move it this way a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the rig right in the middle for right now. And I'm going to leave it like that, and I'm going to click Apply. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the stabilization. I want to get the horizon set. So I'm going to compute motion. Now the rig is sitting on a monopod. It's nice and sturdy. There wasn't much wind. I don't expect that I'm going to see very much. But it's a good thing to go ahead and take a look at this parameter because there are times when the rig may be moving and this will help you determine if you need to make adjustments. Again, we'll come back in just a second when this finishes doing its motion analysis. And there we're done. Now, I know that I don't have much going on. If you look at the compensation levels, zero is disabled. From one to 33 is for shaking only. From 34 to 66 is for fast motions. And then from 67 to 90 is all but long-term motions. And then 100 is full. So I'm gonna turn it down. It really doesn't have much going on. I'm gonna leave it right there. And you see, basically, it's just about non-existent. But, like I said, it's good to have it and it's good to go to use this as a standard procedure. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and compute my RMS curve. Now the RMS curve will show you how good your stitching is and can show you problem areas that need to be repaired. Okay, our RMS is done, and what we're seeing right now looks actually very good. Um, these little dotted lines that you see here, there's another one down here, so you have 0 to 25%, 25 to 50, 50 to 75. And the lower it is with RMS, the better. 
And so as you can see, we're all below 50%. Now it'd be really great if we were at around 25%, but it's not quite there. But that's looking pretty good and it's very even. As I said, this one doesn't have any spikes in it because we weren't moving the rig around, there wasn't any wind. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check our color harmonization. Now what that does is it evens out the exposure and color among the six cameras. And here's our six cameras. Number one's up here, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. You can also turn on a grid pattern here if you want to check and make sure that you've got things even and centered up the way that you want to. Like if we wanted to make sure we're dead center in the middle of the street, we might just bring that over a little bit like that and then click apply. All right, we're going to turn that off for right now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to auto transition the color and adjust it. And I like to go with every three seconds. So now we're going to click that and you see the progress bar going along down here and as soon as that's done we'll jump back in okay our color is harmonized we're looking very nice now let's talk about blending blending there are two basic settings. Sharp, which is for slow moving content, or in this case, very almost no moving content, or smooth. Smooth gives you a linear blend, which minimizes the parallax issues. But we're looking really good, and for this shot, sharp is exactly what we want. Now we're gonna do one more thing, because we wanna get try and get rid of this rig a little bit better than that. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to go into Giga just to try and adjust that because and we'll check our we'll check our stitching, but I think our stitching looks very good at this point. We're gonna move over here to where I'm not standing right in front of the rig. And let's go ahead and go to Giga and let's check our stitching and let's see if we can get rid of this rig a little bit more. Keep in mind that Giga is just for still pictures. So in general, you wanna do most of your work in auto pano video. Now it is telling us that we need to optimize the stitching a little bit. So we're gonna click optimize. So our stitching is looking pretty good. If you wanna see if there are some issues with your stitch, then this is where you wanna go. You wanna open up the control points and your control points are shown right here. This is all your cameras and you can see the shape of your cameras and you can see how many control points you have. And pretty much, except for a couple of these, we're pretty good. Let's go ahead and check this one. And we'll take a look and see what that looks like. So here's our control point editor. There's not a whole lot for it to grab, and that's why we're running into the problem. So what we can try and do is we can see if we can grab anything more in this area. In this area. And let's see if we can get some, ah, we're getting some decent stitch points. Let's see if we can get them to turn green. Dark red means that they're really bad. This kind of orangey color means that they're, eh, they're not too bad, but they're not too great either. And if you do it a couple of times, you will add more, and hopefully you'll start getting some green ones in there. And we do have some, so let's get rid of our bad ones. So here you see we have our listing of, of control points, of the links, and then we have our control points. Anything that's above a 5.9 is too much. So we wanna delete those. So here we have our first 5.9. I've clicked on the top one. I'm holding down the shift key and clicking and then hitting delete. And we've gotten rid of all the bad control points. 
So now we should have something that looks better. Let's take a look. Let's minimize this. Let's hit optimize. And yeah, that's given us a little bit better. Now let's take a look and see if we really do need to do anything more. I don't think that we do, but let's check our blend. And at this point, this is where you can zoom in and you can look at any area that you want to, to see if you're connected well. If you want to see where your lines are for your cameras, click mask and preview and you'll see. And then if you click blend, it'll show you how that area looks. And as you can see, we're looking very good. The more you zoom in, the definitely the more you can see things. So we're looking here and you can see our overlap is beautiful and our blend looks very, very nice. We got a little bit right there, one spot. So let's see how we're gonna handle that. The best thing to do is to go into control points. Let's zoom back out again and let's see what cameras they, those are. So it looks like between one and five, or it's between three and one, and that's probably why we're having a little bit of an issue because it's it's in between a few areas. If we go here to five, that's where we did our control points a minute ago, and we added some more in. So now what we might wind up having to do is this is a good place to show you how to use a mask. Okay, so the area that we're having a problem with is right here, and also, while we're at it, let's go ahead and get rid of this rig let's do that because that's going to be real easy. So we're going to add a marker for keeping the object. We're going to click there. We're going to click here. And I want to keep this line pretty straight, even though there's nothing there. It's just a good habit to get into. And then up here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top. And for our little problem here where we have three cameras overlapping, I'm going to use the top camera primarily. And so by clicking that, I can move it up a little bit. That'll withdraw this line just some. Let's see how that does for us. That looks pretty good. I don't know if I like where this one is sitting. So I'm going to come down here to this camera and bring it up a little bit more. And there we've evened things out. Let's take a look at the blend. That looks really nice. Now we click save and everything will go back over to auto pano video and all of our project is saved. And now that you notice, we've got a nice clean line here and we've gotten rid of our rig. So now what we wanna do is save our project as and give it a name. Now I've already done this once, call it shot A8A as I've changed it a little bit. And that's about it. Now all we have to do is render this out And we're gonna put it right here for right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this basic stitch with AVP. Save and render.